Um, wow. So what do you do when your practice turns bitter? And that's a non-trivial question because for most of us, we'll hit a time when that happens. For me, it happened today. It's not the first time, so I have tools for dealing with it. But, you know, it's a thing. And, in fact, I have many practices. And when I say practices, I mean things that I intentionally do to um, bring myself into a place where I feel like I'm better able to show up in the world so that what I look like from the outside is more how I feel from the inside. And that's the kind of thing I'm talking about when I'm talking about practices. Now, if you have some, these are going to hopefully make you feel better most of the time. Like, that's the point. So that you're comfortable in yourself, so that you can show up as yourself, not as something that you think that other people want you to be. And that's a tricky balance, which is the subject of a long discussion, and I talk about it a lot um, in little pieces and bits here and there, and I'm not going to talk about it here. But the thing is, is that sometimes these practices make you much less comfortable. Sometimes, like today, for me, I mean, they leave you in a heap sobbing on the floor, which is what happened to me about an hour ago um, while I was working through my asana practice this morning. And truth be told, I don't really understand where all of that came from. Like, I don't have a story. There's nothing I feel like I can fix. I just have the sense of sadness, really. Now, I've been doing this long enough that I know that my feelings will change because everything changes. But this thing of my asana practice taking me to a place that is uncomfortable has been going on now, you know, for a few weeks, like longer than a few weeks. And it's affecting the way that I practice. And that brings us back to the question where I started, you know, what do you do? And the short answer, the kind of glib answer, is actually the one that has worked the best for me over the last 30-odd years that I've been working with intentional practices, and that is you keep going. Not that you power through by force of will, but that you recognize in the famous words of Shrek the philosopher, you know, it's layers. <laughs> Ogres and onions have layers. And in fairness, many of us are like his little sidekick that, you know, would much rather it all be parfait you know, where every layer is really nice and you can kind of enjoy your way going down through it. Um, it just doesn't work that way. <laughs> um, one of my favorite authors, um, and if I was prepared, I would be able to remember it, Danielle Laporte, uh, in her book, um, I, 
in her book, The Desire Map, um, makes really clear that in the psychology of um, performance, they've realized that this is a thing, that when change starts to kick in, there is a resistance that really starts to push back because everything about our body and our mind is constructed to promote stability. And change is the opposite of stability. So when you hit that uncomfortable place, you keep going. Now, yes, you need to honor what's happening, but you don't quit. It's not like the broken car that you need to get rid of. Because in this case, the practice is both the problem and the answer. So that's my little bit. Um, I've run on probably long. I don't know how long it's going to be once I'm done editing. But in the wake of my practice this morning, I really felt like I should share that. So maybe it's for me. I don't know. But here I am giving it to you. Thanks for your time.